Well, good morning. I was so mesmerized by the music, and I got Mark waving in the back here. It's like, oh, oh. Well, welcome. Um, and for those of you online, I'm the Reverend Darren Morgan, the pastor of the Federated Church of Orleans, Massachusetts. And this is our worship service for Sunday, March 14th, 2021. I pray you all find a spiritual connection with us as you worship here this Sunday morning. We are an all-inclusive, open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ and the Unitarian Universalist Association who believes that no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Okay, announcements, and there are a lot of them for um, those in the room. You've got a bulletin. Um, first, saying a thank you for maintaining COVID vigilance, although many of us in the room have already had one, if not two shots. Woohoo! We're getting there. Um, today, we're going to be doing a, a collection for one great hour of sharing. There's a little um, piece in the bulletin to kind of describe that. Um, uh, unfortunately, as these things happen with UCC resources, the special envelopes that are supposed to, you know, you, where you put your donation in, haven't arrived yet. Um, <clears throat> if you could um, use an envelope that's in the pews, that would be, you know, mark right on it, OGHS. For those of you online, if you send in your donation on the memo, that will help uh, Amy out immensely by just putting OGHS, the one great hour of sharing contribution as part of the five for five special offerings. For those that might be interested in, in uh, our congregation uh, becoming a wise congregation, a welcoming, inclusive, supportive, engaged congregation, please see Carolyn Witt. I spoke about a wise congregation a number of weeks ago when I preached on mental illness. Um, Samuel Treat Day is coming up um, this week um, the, on the 18th. The details are in your bulletin and there's a website and where you can participate in this virtually or I think there's a drive-by um, various events. So there's the details there. Also next Sunday um, in the afternoon there is a Cape Cod Voices of Color um, program that, that our Justice Committee is going to be sponsoring along with Am Hayam. Um, uh, details are in your bulletin. If you would like to participate, this will be a, a Zoom webinar, um, so they won't see your pictures. It will just be uh, kind of the Brady Bunch of just those who are speaking. Um, but uh, send Jeff uh, um, uh, Talmadge an email, and he'll send you the Zoom link so you can participate in that. The details um, are um, in your bulletin. Easter flowers, one more last call you have until next Sunday if you are interested in um, adorning uh, our chancel for Easter. Um, so uh, uh, get with Kimberly Denis at the church office. The scheduled events for this coming week are posted in your bulletin. And as you can see, we have a lot of meetings this week. There's something about this week in the month um, between uh, the deacons and the Board of Living Mission in Action and the cabinet are meeting along with all the kind of usual stuff of the Strong for Life and the Centering Prayer twice a week, um, the Wednesday Lenten Prayer that we're offering, live stream as well as in person. Um, so, whew, you know, NAMI, book study, it, uh, Bible study, it's, wow, gateways, wow, busy place. Um, if you want to keep up um, with what's going on, um, and you're not receiving uh, information from the church office it's because we don't have your email address. So certainly for those online who are um, plugged in with us today, um, please be in touch with Kimberly Denis, our church administrator. Give her your email address. We'll make sure that you get all the notes, news, and announcements, my Monday musing that goes out. Um, we want to have you feel a part of this community of faith. So are there any other notes or announcements that need to be lifted up this morning? Well, let us begin the worship of God.
Please join me in the call to worship. We are yearning for the day, the day our hope made real, the day when nobody is hungry, nobody is thirsty, the day of God's love flowing freely. Shade from sun and shelter from the wind, the compassionate one guides us to the springs of living water in the word and in mighty deeds. We worship our God and let love flow. Please join in the gathering hymn. Please join me in the gathering prayer. Source of love made flesh, we stream to you from east and west, seeking the right and holding on to the holy. Settle us, body and soul, in the land of hope your prophets proclaimed. Free our hearts and minds to hear anew the call to passion the challenges of the community, the needs of our neighbors, call to us in this one great hour that we may gather in the spirit and in truth and be changed, seated, settled now. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I call your attention to the chancel for this visual arts moment deep purple. Our Lenten journey nears its destination. Soon we will enter the city of David and celebrate his arrival along with his followers and the crowd. Soon we will sit with him at supper. Soon he will wash our feet, give us a new commandment, tell us how he will be with us after he is gone. Soon we will be witnesses to his crucifixion and death. In each event we may wonder, as did so many then, who is who this Jesus really is. The purple drape on the table reminds us of the truth that, though rejected by all, God will reveal by his empty tomb. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Your word, O oh God, has power to change our lives and to create a whole new world. As we meditate on your word this day, fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may treasure your word with our whole hearts and fix our eyes on your Amen. Our reading this morning is found in the Hebrew Scriptures, Isaiah 49, verses 8 to 12. Hear these words from Eugene Peterson's The Message. God also says, when the time's ripe, I answer you. When victories do, I help you. I form you and use you to reconnect the people with me to put the land in order, to resettle families on the ruined properties. I tell prisoners, come on out, you're free. 
and those huddled in fear, it's all right, it's safe now. There will be food stands along all the roads, picnics on all the hills, nobody hungry, nobody thirsty, shade from the sun, shelter from the wind, for the compassionate one guides them, takes them to the best springs, I'll make all my mountains into roads, turn them into a superhighway. Look, these coming from far countries and those out of the north, these streaming in from the west and those from all the way down the Nile. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Will you please pray with me? O oh God, come to us in the quietness of this very moment. Center our hearts and our minds on you and you alone. Open us to the power and to the presence of your Holy Spirit and remind us that your love, mercy, and grace come to us unasked for and free. Amen. This past week marked the one year anniversary in which the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus a global pandemic. COVID-19 has claimed the lives of over 2.6 million people worldwide. One fifth or 20% of those deaths, over half a million, has come from the US, despite our only accounting for 4.25% of the world's total population. These deaths have been in the, in the face of tight lockdowns and other pandemic measures. We have never, we have never faced a public health challenge of this magnitude in our lifetimes. It was one year ago, days following my joyous candidating with you all, that the focus immediately became with flattening the curve, which was only suggested to be two weeks. Weeks turned into months, months, have now turned into one year. A great deal has transpired in this past year. We have learned the shortcomings of our governmental and healthcare institutions, our lack of public health emergency preparedness, and and the remarkable ways in which people and science came together to bring to market a vaccine quicker than ever thought humanly possible. Now the vaccine distribution was a bit rocky at start and thankfully things are improving, hence the sore arms in the room, right? Although for many of us, it's not fast enough. There are still many here in this community still trying to get an appointment. The Biden administration recently announced that by the end of May, everyone in the US will have access to a vaccine. That is good news to a hurting, exhausted world. Yes. The world has endured an incredible, unimaginable year. In a global crisis, we are faced with a danger that defied our usual protective hedges. While some were made more vulnerable by economic or geographic factors, 
everyone, everyone in the world has been affected by this disease. Lines on a map do not stop the spread of a pandemic. The disease doesn't recognize human-made boundaries. Now, whether we like it or not, our lives are deeply intertwined with our neighbors, close to home and around the world. The sooner that we recognize this human codependency, the better we are able to let love flow generously and indiscriminately to those who need it most. COVID-19 has shown the world that we are all interconnected with one another. Isaiah was a prophet while the nation of Israel was divided into two kingdoms, Israel to the north and Judah in the south. The, the northern kingdom had sinned greatly against God and the southern kingdom, well, they were headed in the same direction, perverting justice, oppressing the poor, turning away from God toward idols and looking for military aid from pagan nations rather than God. Isaiah came primarily as a prophet to Judah, but his message was also for Israel. I mean, you could say that the, uh, the book of Isaiah is like a miniature Bible. The first um, 39 chapters are filled with judgment upon the immoral and idolatrous nation. And the final 27 uh, chapters, they declare this message of hope. No other book in the Bible has more to say about the captivity of God's people and the promise of freedom and restoration than the book of Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied to the events that would come to pass soon for both the north and southern kingdoms. He prophesied events that would be far off in their fulfillment. A deliverer to come. Now the text that David just read occurs in that second part of the book of Isaiah where the prophet articulates a, a stunning vision of a world of justice and equity. A world where everyone has enough, that all live in safety and abundance. It is also a vision of the world of interconnectedness. If our congregation's missional impact was thought to be a stream or uh, perhaps we should say it's uh, an ocean considering our geographic location. So if our, if our congregation is an ocean, where do our waters flow? What path do those of us who work in this ministry, where does that take us? And whose lives are touched by our living flowing water. In Isaiah, God says, I'll make all my mountains into roads, turn them into super highways. How does the mission stream that flows from our congregation shape the landscape around us as it makes its path in the world? The people of Israel found themselves in exile in a strange land when Jerusalem was conquered by Babylon. And now the Babylonians themselves have been conquered by Persia and Cyrus the Great. So the prophet speaks to the people after Babylon has fallen. So on the surface, it is a heavy time of war, poverty, and 
devastation. But despite that devastation, it is also a time of restoration. This new generation of wanderers might finally be allowed to to return home, to reclaim their land, to rebuild their homes, and yes, even to restore the temple. And all the while, the prophet assures Israel that their covenant with God has never been broken. Even as their structures and institutions crumbled, God remained with the people. I gotta tell you, it's, it's like reading these words and reading the signs of what we're going through now. Was Isaiah just written last year for us? Because this is us. This sense of restoration and hope, that's what is being prophesied. One critical part of that covenant, though, from what Isaiah says to Israel, is their responsibility to extend beyond themselves. That God had had called them more widely to minister to the nations around them, to show compassion and mercy as as an expression of their covenant living. This was now their part, their identity as God's people before the exile and it remains part of their core of who they are as they move into this season of renewal. Let us not forget our call, Isaiah says to them, even, or maybe especially, in a time of upheaval, upheaval, they are called to be people who live outside of themselves. In this moment, God is inviting them to step into their role as a community that will let their love flow in new and innovative ways. In this time, when all of us have been touched by this global pandemic, we are called to be people of restoration, releasing our love in the world in new and innovative ways that answer the unique needs of this season. As the body of Christ in this world, the church, we put flesh on this vision. A world shaped by love moving from one place to another. In this season of Lent, we are given the opportunity to intentionally pause and reflect on our faith journey. We are challenged to look at our lives through this lens of God's values. So during this season, may we let go of hopelessness Let go of fears and distractions. May we have the courage to consider new ways in which we can let our love show. The love of God born anew during this pandemic. The reconciling love of God requires a response from each and every one of us. Now, our faith teaches us that our life is not our own. It belongs to God. And our lives are not about us. It's about God. God working through us to shine God's light in the world around us. The body of Christ today transforms everything it touches. 
much like the body of water at the heart of Isaiah's vision for humankind. Our body of water, the Federated Church of Orleans, lets our love flow in our missional impact in this community. Last week, for example, I presented a prayer shawl knit by the prayer shawl group to a grieving widow as she laid to rest her husband. Our prayer-filled arms were wrapped around this grieving widow who is yet to, to claim Orleans as her retirement home. But yet she now knows the love of this community. The local mission committee met last week and awarded needed funds to the Lower Cape Outreach Council, to the Food for Kids, and the Alzheimer's Support Center. Our missional dollars are making an impact on those in need in this community. The Gateway Spirituality Group, the Centering Prayer Group, and the Wednesday Lenten Prayer Group all gathered, they all gather to draw from God's water, quenching our thirst so that we can share what God has given us as we let our love flow. Now that love crosses all sorts of space and dividing lines, knitting together a human story and bringing God's kingdom here to our time. The Care for Creation team is planning activities to celebrate Earth Day next month. Our love of creation put forth into action and so many of you, so many of you have offered your prayers, your telephone calls, your cards of support, reaching out to those in need without fanfare, spreading God's love widely. Later in Isaiah, the prophet writes, Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts comes to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, eat, come, buy milk and wine without money, without price. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant. We the Federated Church of Orleans are part of that covenant today. Those living waters that flow, changing lives as our water reaches all who thirst. Now, every body of water has one thing in common. It's a source. But for us, that source is not this sanctuary, as we have found out by our live streaming. That source is not our vestry or our fellowship hall. Our source is not a building. It is the love of God made known in Christ in this community. When we unleash that power and let our love flow, miraculous things happen in the wake of that water. What stories of new life might be possible when our gifts are set on a course to flow throughout the world? Now, in many ways, our world was not prepared for the weight of the COVID-19 global pandemic, but this pandemic has not stopped our missional outreach. It has not stopped our ministry of reaching out with God's love 
into this world. Nobody hungry, nobody thirsty. That is the hope of God in Isaiah, in this text. When the gifts of our hearts, we let love flow like new well water to the parched, dry places in the community. So I invite you to be part of this quenching body of water by this life-giving water. Together, let us share God's love with all. Amen. Let us pray. When we have crouched in fear, most holy, loving one, your presence has given us strength. When we have been alone and unsure, you have sent companions and messengers across deserts, across seas, across time itself to remind us that no one is forgotten. When we have hung our heads in despair, you have raised up children generation after generation who have proven that with you, all things are possible. We thank you for your unrelenting pursuit of our well-being, for the drops of mercy within us that make great rivers of compassion when we join them together. You immerse us in healing waters, and we are glad. Guide us to take part in shaping a world where all people know such joy. Let hunger end by the open hands of generous hearts. Let none be thirsty as your love freely flows. Let health be restored to the sick of body, mind, or spirit. And in Jesus' name, let us help. When we who have known mercy are people of compassion, strengthen through you and through the one we follow, Jesus Christ. With a renewed and holy spirit, we are joyful. We pledge justice and we make peace on all your mountains and plains. May such love flow through all your people now and always. Holy One, we lift up the names of those in this community who need your comforting presence, your healing touch, and your gentle love as we pray for Kay and Bill. Our prayers are with Roz and Bob. We pray for Glenda and Marilyn. Our prayers are with Helen and Anne. We pray for Jane and Marion. We pray for Jan and Mike. Our prayers are with Connie and Lynn. We pray for Shirley, Bobby, and Sandra. And we pray for Ross. Our prayers are with the family and friends of Marilyn Harris, who passed away on March 8th. Our prayers are with the family and friends of Catherine Jordan, who died on March 6. Our prayers are with the family and friends of Robert, Robert Schlesinger, who died on March 3rd. And we pray for the family and friends of both Dick Perry, who passed away last month, as well as his wife, Helen, who we just learned had passed away earlier last year. Oh God, we pray for those who are affected by this COVID-19 global pandemic, especially those working on the front lines. And so we pray for Dr. Kim, 
Birgit, and Beth. And in the silence of our hearts and with the words of our lips, hear our cries for those who cannot be named aloud. Hear us, O God, as we silently pray. Hear, O oh God, these prayers and all the other prayers we offer to you in our hearts at this time. We ask it in the name of the one we follow, Jesus Christ, saying together the prayer Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
wow. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to come across online, but in this room, this place was just rocking. General, thank you for bringing this music to our grand musicians. Great job. Nobody hungry, nobody thirsty is the hope of God in Isaiah. It is also the hope of the one great hour of our sharing and caring. I invite you to contribute generously to this special offering of the United Church of Christ, which goes towards disaster, um, refugee and immigration, development ministries throughout the world. So please mark your gifts. OGHS, for those in the room, I invite you to leave your, your regular offerings and your gifts to OGHS um, in the plate in the upper narthex. For those of you at home, I invite you to, to mail your contributions to the Federated Church of Orleans, PO Box 761, East Orleans, Massachusetts, 02643. Or you can go to our website, www.fed churchorleans.org and click on the donate now button on the top of the page and there is where you could give just a pledge offering um, or other Amy will know other this week will be for one great hour sharing thank you I invite you to follow along with us on a parting hymn which is womb of life and source of being Be at peace, love God, keep the commandments, give alms to the poor, and inasmuch as within each of us lies, live at peace and let our love flow. And the blessings of God and of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit rest and remain deep in your hearts this day and always. Amen. <laughs>